Hello, this is Vec. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos. Today I am in Greece and I'm visiting the historic capital of Greece, the city of Athens. The building that you see right behind me is one of the top 10 most famous museums in the world. This is the National Archaeological Museum of Greece in Athens. This particular video we're going to go inside the museum and videotape the most famous exhibits. You can spend literally hours and hours in this magnificent museum. We're going to bypass the less significant exhibits and we're going to concentrate on the most famous ones. This is Vic. I will tell you everything about every exhibit that we see. Let's do it. Now before we go inside, let's uh, take a look at the outside of the magnificent National Archaeological Museum here in Athens. Let's take a look at the magnificent building constructed in 1866 in neoclassical style and design as you can see here. Very popular in the second half of the 19th century. The neoclassical design. You can see so many beautiful buildings like this one in Vienna, Budapest, and Paris. It was constructed in order to house archaeological finds from all over Greece and it is right now one of the 10 top most popular archaeological museums to visit in the world and justifiably so. So here's a very last view. It is right next to the Polytechnic Institute of Greece and very very close to Ammonia Square, the main square in the center of Athens. With all that, here's another view and let's go inside and enjoy the magnificent exhibits of this museum. And uh, here's the golden death mask of Agamemnon from the uh, 16th century before Christ. Agamemnon, of course, was the king of Mycenae, of Mykene. And that's where this uh, golden death mask was found at. And he was also the leader of the Greeks during the Trojan campaign. One of the most significant findings and exhibits here at the National Archaeological Museum of Greece in Athens. Now since we looked at the uh, golden death mask from Mycenae, from Mycenae. Let's look at some other findings from the same time period. This is from the 16th century before Christ from Mycenae, from Mykene. All these items that you see here are golden. And they were found during excavations at the end of the 19th century in Mycenae, in Mykene. And uh, here's one of the most remarkable and most famous bronze statues here at this magnificent museum. This is the statue of a jockey racing a horse. On his left hand, he was supposed to be holding the reins for the horse and on his right hand, a whip. You can see the expression of the young jockey right there as he's racing with this magnificent horse. This is from about 140 before Christ and it was found on a shipwreck of the island of Evia here in Greece. One of the most famous bronze statues of the country by far. And 
And uh, here is another beautiful bronze statue from around 350 before Christ found in the Marathon area of Attica, just outside of Athens. And it depicts a young athlete holding an object and looking at it on his left hand. Nobody's really sure what he was holding and looking at. But look at the beautiful expression on his face and the eyes right there. Magnificent, absolutely magnificent. Now, if you see any brochures about this magnificent museum, without a doubt, you will see photographs of this beautiful bronze statue over two meters and 20 centimeters in height. It depicts a young man and he was made around 330 before Christ. One of the most beautiful bronze statues ever made during the classical Greek times. And uh, here is a beautiful marble statue of the goddess Themis, T-H-E-M-I-S, the goddess of justice. It was found just outside of Athens. And this beautiful statue was made around 300 before Christ from beautiful pentelic marble from a mountain just outside of Athens and of the same marble that was used to construct a Parthenon. And uh, here's another beautiful marble statue about three meters in height of Poseidon, the god of the seas. When he's raised right arm, he must have been holding a trident when the statue was first completed. It was made around 125 before Christ from marble from the island of Paros and it was found in the island of Milos. One of the most beautiful classic Greek marble statues here at the museum. And uh, here's one of my favorite statues, marble statues here at the museum. It shows a fallen warrior. He has been wounded on his right thigh and he is kneeling He's trying to defend himself with his left hand, as you can see there. Look at the agony on his face. Now, the reason I like this statue, which was made, by the way, around 100 before Christ, with marble from the island of Paros, the reason I like this statue is because it resembles so much a statue by Da Vinci at the Louvre, the fallen slave. And for those of you that can make the comparison, you're probably smiling right now. In that statue at the Louvre, Da Vinci uses the same methodology to depict the muscles of the fallen person here, as you can see. What a beautiful statue indeed. Look at this. Here's an amphora or a vase that was placed on top of a tomb in ancient Athens in the Keramikos Cemetery. This is a huge amphora 
of about two meters in height. What's important here is not just the height and the age. This was made in 750 before Christ. What's important are the scenes here of the family of the dead grieving. And from here we're learning that the ancient Greeks were grieving by placing their hands behind their heads right there. And uh, here's a colossal statue of a kouros, of a young man, over three meters in height, made out of uh, marble from the island of Naxos here in Greece. And this statue that you see here was made around 700 before Christ and it stood next to the temple of Poseidon in Sunion, about 50 kilometers south of Greece. Now what's remarkable here is that this statue looks very much like the Egyptian statues. Look at the hands placed on the side of the body of the young man. Look at the face and the hair. So the classic Greek statues after 500 before Christ, the style has not developed yet. Around 700 before Christ, the statues look very much like the Egyptian statues. It is a couple of centuries later when the beautiful architectural design and style developed of the classic Greek statues. And uh, here's a beautiful statue of a kouros, of a young man, from around 500 before Christ. This statue was once placed on the tomb of the wealthy Athenian. But here you can see the transition from the Egyptian style, the archaic style of sculpture, to the classical Greek style. You can see now the kouros, you can see his muscles, you can see that he's walking forward, he's not standing still with his arms down by his side. And you can see now facial expressions on the statue as well. And uh, here's another bronze statue, one of the most famous bronze statues in the whole country of Greece. This was made around 460 before Christ. And there's a debate whom it depicts. If it depicts Zeus, then he's ready to strike with the thunderbolt here. If it, if it depicts Poseidon, the god of the seas, then he is supposed to be holding a trident. A magnificent statue indeed. About two and a half meters in height. A very, very popular site. This is like the Mona Lisa of the National Archaeological Museum of Greece here in Athens. And uh, here is a collection of weapons from a ancient Mycenae or Mykene from the 15th century before Christ. Now most likely these are exactly the weapons that were used during the Trojan campaign that Homer describes in his Iliad, his lyric poems. And uh, here's a remarkable collection of items found in a tomb in the island of Naxos. 
in Kiklades or Cyclades in the Aegean Sea here in Greece. Now what's amazing about these objects is that they date from 3200 before Christ. Here's more jewelry from ancient Mykine or Mycenae. All these items that you see here are from the 16th century before Christ. And there's a wide variety of gold and jewelry here, including belts, earrings, a lot of earrings right there. And this is just a small display of golden objects from Mycenae or from Mykine. Look what the Greeks produced and made in the 16th century before Christ here in Greece. And if I was to turn around in this wing of the museum, there are two more areas with jewelry of three. You can see them right there. Another one right here in front of us. And another one. So there are hundreds and hundreds of jewelry items from ancient Mycenae or Mykine. Look at these ones. And on the second floor of the museum, we find an extensive display of items that were recovered from excavating the town of Akrotiri in the island of Thira or Santorini in the Cyclades or Kiklades part of Greece. Akrotiri was a main port, a commercial port in the island of Thira or Santorini and it had existed since 5000 before Christ. At around 1600 before Christ, a volcano exploded and covered the town of Akrotiri with mud and sand. The, uh, Town of Akrotiri was excavated in the 20th century and a lot of items were recovered in perfect shape. You can see this vase here which dates from around 2000 before Christ. So come up here and enjoy this vast exhibit and enjoy the views of the items recovered. Some of them are as old as 3000 before Christ. You can spend hours and hours up here reading every label for every item. Incidentally, every item here has been described beautifully in Greek and in English. And as I said, this is a vast exhibit and display. So come up here, spend at least half an hour going through admiring this ancient objects. Akrotiri is the Pompeii of Greece. The only difference between the two, Akrotiri and Pompeii, is 17 centuries of time. Akrotiri is 17 centuries older than Pompeii in Italy. Now, if we consider the statue of Zeus or Poseidon to be the Mona Lisa of this museum, then uh, what you're looking at here is certainly the Rosetta Stone, or similar to the Rosetta Stone that is exhibited at the British Museum regarding its popularity. 
This is the world's very first analog computer made by ancient Greeks. This is a very complicated mechanism with gears and springs to calculate days of the calendar, including the Egyptian calendar, calendar the Greek calendar positions of the stars and so on. This is the famous Antikythera finding that was found on a shipwreck by the island of Antikythera in 1900. And there are always, always crowds, huge crowds around this remarkable computer that nobody knows how the Greeks manufactured this computer with lots of gears and springs rotating. Something that uh, a human being could not manufacture until the 16th century after Christ. Now let's uh, stand back for just a couple of seconds. That's the display of the Antikythera analog computer right there. And there's always a huge crowd around it. If you want to know more about this incredible first computer in the world, Wikipedia has an excellent article about it with a lot of uh, fascinating details. The last thing I want to tell you is that nobody really knows how it worked, and that's because here's from the rear. By the time it was found, it was centuries old in the sea, and the whole device was compressed. So we can already decipher and take it apart and find out how it exactly worked. You can see some of the gears right there. Okay guys, hello once again and I hope you have enjoyed the tour of this wonderful museum here in Athens. This was the National Archaeological Museum of Greece in Athens. As you would expect, it has hundreds of thousands of exhibits I tried to show you a cross section of the most famous findings from the excavations here in Greece. Some of the items that we saw go back as far as 5,000 years before Christ. This is Vic. Thank you for joining me all the way from Athens in Greece. Bye bye.